Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I consider Waikiki Beach the happiest place on earth because we have newlyweds coming out here to celebrate their their marriage. We have so many families with young children. Our favorite thing to do, Cindy and I, is to sit and, sit and have a cup of coffee and watch the mother and dad with the two little kids tagging behind them, bringing them down to the beach, maybe for many of them the first time in their life. So uh, uh, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, you know, I'm working on my next book, uh, Man Meditations, Morning Man Meditations, uh, 366 Meditations. It's called uh, Mo uh, Morning Man Meditations for Men of Grit and Grace. And <clears throat> the meditation I just wrote ab about was uh, about the, the verse that says, iron sharpens iron. And the, the verses that talk about being put in the furnace. My son, this is from the book of Sirach. My son, if you aspire to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for an ordeal for the chosen man is proven in the furnace of much affliction. I'm talking to men right now. This is how men are made. This is how this is how iron is made. And by the way, um, King David, um, uh, it was just around that time when we to turn from the Bronze Age to, to the Iron Age began. Iron is made like this. You get iron ore, and you let you put a layer of coal down, then a layer of iron, then a layer of coal, then a layer of iron, and you blast it. Uh, you blast that with the hottest possible heat. And uh, and then you uh, throw some limestone in there because you do that again and again until the until the iron is iron has this has that metallic iron element to it and because it's been purified by the use of the limestone uh, and then you know what you do the 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 metalsmith will take that piece of iron out put it on that anvil we all know know about and he'll begin to hammer it and hammer and hammer and hammer and hammer it to make it uh, to forge it together that's called the forging process. And uh, and then he'll put it uh, in the in the water, cool it down, and then he goes back in the fire, and gets it heated up as hot it, as it can be. Then it's brought out, and then it's hammered some more. And as the as that piece of metal, that piece of iron is being formed into a sword, he'll lay it back on itself, hammer it again and again and again, till it really becomes uh, molded together and strong. And so I think the the reality of a man is basically if the only, there's no way to become a man without adversity. That you can't become a man without that. A real man uh, loves uh, loves by taking on responsibility. In Hawaii, the word is kuleana uh, for those that God has called him to serve. And so, there's no, there's no. We're the ones that want to um, face down the adversity and those that that we love in our lives and and help them through any trials that they're going through. But you can't be made a man without the that pattern of um, fire, rinse. You know, I guess it's fire, hammer, rinse, repeat. That's the pattern you have to go through to become a man. So if you feel like you're in the midst of a fire, you feel like God's hammering away at you, that's just because he loves you and he's forming you into the full image of his of His son. And he's forming you in, into the man that he needs for you to be so that you can fulfill your personal calling and your telos. And uh, and by doing that, find real happiness. Real happiness is just is just pursuing the true good and the, the particular good that God has called you to. Well, we're digging on the fact that we have with us today a man whose ministry, I'm not sure if this is the name of the ministry, but it, through the fire is, uh, is um, I guess, his, uh, his, his creed, at least. And uh, we have with us Deacon Don Prendergast. Uh, welcome to the show, Deacon. Hey, Bear, how are you? It's good to be with you. Have you ever Thanks seen that? Me. I love your little your little vid your videos. Um, we need more of those. You know, you're back in the other. I see you back in the back backyard. It looks like, uh, and yeah. you're just talking. To, you're just talking to people like you would. You're talking to men. I think really relate to you, just like a man would talk with another man. It's not preachy. It's just talking story with someone. Well, you see, I I think that's what really is needed. You know, it's it could be a real turn off when you're you're dealing with just ordinary guys who are just struggling to stay afloat. And, you know, the world that we're living in today, it, it's so incredibly judgmental. 
And what I mean by that is, you know, so many guys, you know, am I good enough? Am I too much? Am I not enough? Um, am I doing it wrong? You know, and, and society, you know, we don't have to get into it, but all the wokeisms out there, there are so many guys that are worried about being authentic men. And so what do they end up doing? They end up shying away and fading into the background. And that by itself has a lot of consequences because that's not what God made us for. God made us to be leaders. God made us to be strong and to protect our family. And the only way that we're going to be able to live out that vocation is to be authentically masculine. Well, you know, I got to tell you, Deacon, I don't even use that word masculine anymore because it's been co-opted yeah. by all this gender confusion. My new book, my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the mm -hmm. Cowboys Gone? I used the word manliness in there on purpose because uh, okay. I knew it would provoke people. I was invited to go speak in at the Tampa Bay Men's Conference, and they said it's going to be called Catholic Masculinity. And I said, well, I'm not going to come. I I'll come if you change it to Catholic Manliness, and they did. Wow. And the, play the place was packed. Uh, one of the things about that is the word man in its root word, it comes from the word ver, the Latin word ver. It's where you get mm -hmm. the word virtue. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I know about you is that you you talk a lot about virtue. But before we go into that, I want to know how Deacon Don became Deacon Don. I want to know about how God forged you, because uh -huh. I know you have the background in the military, and you were a New York, I believe, a, a detective, right? And then now you're living the life... Uh, and and you and you and you adopted and 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 uh, cared for many uh, Russian orphans, and now you're down in in, in Florida living the that easy life, you know, yeah, right. face, facing alligators out of your backyard. Yeah. But we we would like to hear hear give us that context that you, of of your life story. Um, sure, absolutely. I, I guess it, it has to. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 we're going to have a break in about five minutes, but I I want I want I, we will continue this by, by the great okay. break. We really want to hear your story. So I, probably the best place to start would be um, probably when I was around 10 years old. Okay. And, and I'm, I'm, it may sound cliche, but no, really, it probably the best place to start would be around when I was 10 years old. And, you know, I never, I never had any particular calling from God to do anything special. But I can say that when I was 10, 10 and a half, I joined the Boy Scouts. And, you know, it's sad what the Boy Scouts have become. Uh, it's not the organization that I joined when I was 10 and a half years old. But in a very, very basic, basic starting point, the idea of living your life according to an oath, the Scout Oath, living your life according to the Scout Law, 12 Principles, the fundamentals of do a good turn daily, you know, do a good deed. All of those basic principles really shaped my perspective. And I recall saying to others, you know, there's enough evil in the world. I don't need to add to it. And that really has been kind of my attitude growing up. Did I do it perfectly? No, of course not. But genuinely speaking, that has been my attitude. And I, I truly believe that by having that kind of attitude where I'm going to do good, I may not do it perfectly, but I'm going to try to do good. Uh, I'm not going to take advantage of people. I'm just going to try to do good. Laying that as a foundation, it opens you up for the Holy Spirit to start talking to you and to introduce to you other ideas. And I would say over the course of my life, and again, I don't claim to be Padre Pio, okay? I am. I don't claim to be anything special. I just, if anything, I'm just a guy that maybe paid attention when the Holy Spirit was talking, but I don't claim to be anything special. But I do believe that when you have that fundamental attitude that I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to be a good guy. I'm just going to do good. And, you know, we see that if we go back in history, the Stoics, you know, that whole attitude of Stoicism, you know, where you're not going to be wrapped around your emotions. You're just going to be focusing on the reality that's in front of you and that you're called to follow 
you know, the direction of God, you know, that kind of foundation is what <clears throat> led me, you know, into the military. And I served, I served in the late eighties under president Reagan in the air force. And, uh, after that <clears throat> came home and, uh, started working, got a job as a New York city police officer. Eventually I was promoted to detective. Uh, but again, just the idea of I'm just going to do good. And that followed with me as a cop followed with me when I was in the military, but even more so when I was a cop, it followed with me. And I, I worked as a youth officer in South Jamaica, Queens. And again, in Manhattan, I worked as a youth officer, ran youth programs and just made myself available for others, you know, in one capacity or another. We're and talking then, yes. with Deacon, we're talking with, we're talking with uh, Deacon Don Prendergast, who is currently a deacon down in the, I believe, Orlando area. And uh, we're going to dig a little bit more into his story and then the, and the, the, the word that God's given him for us, you know, the, the life message that God has built into him. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other, to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Why do we call it the Bear Wozniak Adventure? It's because every one of us is on an adventure. I think it was Louis L'Amour that said it, or maybe it was C.S. Lewis. I don't know. But basically, both of them ha have a similar statement that they made, which is that the word adventure just is kind of a romantic way of saying things went wrong. You know, that you're, you, you're, 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 you're pursuing a goal, you're pursuing a life, and then adversity comes your way. And it's adversity uh, that really uh, trains us and develops a virtue within us. The other thing is that we say on our TV show, Long Ride Home, that the, the adventure begins at the detour. It's when things go in an unexpected direction. And that's often where the Holy Spirit kind of comes in and shakes things up, stirs the pot, uh, and suddenly your life, uh, you know, 
begins to develop in a whole new whole new trajectory. Um, but we want to invite you to go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member of the School of Manliness and our Man Cave. Uh, the Man Cave is a non-Facebook community of men that gather together. We, you know, we share our thoughts and that sort of thing throughout the throughout the day. Um, and about once a month, we get together for a Zoom video meetup. And then we have the School of Manliness, which is a really pretty extensive curriculum. It's a, we all go through the same the same subject together each month, but it's video, it's audio, it's written, it's self assessment. So it's it's a great great gift. And the men who really use it, you get out of it what you put into it. But the men who are really using it to the fullest, uh, we give them their their sons can have access to the School of Manliness too. So he can track them as they go through the curriculum, and you can share share the the thoughts shared there and talk talk story with your sons about that. Um, Great way for fathers to teach their sons. They don't get access to the man cave, but the fathers and sons can work together through the school of manliness. So speaking of manliness, we have with us, I would say a man's man. We have Deacon Don Prendergast with us. He's a deacon now in the diocese down in Orlando. Is that with Bishop Noonan? Is that that diocese? Yes, it is. Yeah, John Noonan. Yeah, yeah there's a beautiful uh, painting there that a friend of mine, Tom Equals, did on the virtues. Uh, there's a painting. Uh, it's somewhere, I think, in the rectory. Um and and it's just it's just a beautiful picture of image of Jesus and the, and then the the virtues are are written are written there and so your your life uh, uh, your life pursuit at, in the military and then as a detective how did your faith grow a detective in the New York Police Department I should say yeah well you know again you know as we were talking about earlier I don't claim to be anything particularly special in fact my vocation as a deacon actually came out of my ignorance of being a Catholic, you know? And, and so what I mean by that is uh, it was, I want to say it was 1999 when um, I'm at work one day and I'm working for a um, wonderful, wonderful guy who also happened to be the uh, historian for the NYPD Emerald Society. I've told this story so many times, I probably owe him royalties, but uh, I'm, work I'm working for this guy and he's asking me questions about our faith. And I have, I don't know any of the answers. I know nothing. I barely know the Our Father and the Hail Mary. I mean, I don't know anything about being a Catholic at that point. And then, you know, as I was saying, as I was saying last time, you know, I do have, I did have at that time, I did have that foundation of, of desiring to do good and to be good. And so he asks me about the Catholic faith. I have no answers. The next day he comes back to work and he hands me a book. Mm -hmm. And the name of the book is why do Catholics do that? That's and he says book. to me, it's a great yeah. book. And he says to me, he goes, you know, maybe you should read this book so that you know what the Catholic faith is about. So, you know, my boss tells me to read a book. I read a book. So I brought the book home and I read through the book and then I get to the chapter. And for those of you that are not familiar with the book, it goes through everything. It goes through the mass. It goes through the vestments that the priest wears. It goes through the whole bit. And then there's a chapter in the book on the role of the deacon. And I'm reading that chapter and, and it's as if a light bulb goes off. You know, I'm reading that chapter and it's like, aha, okay, God. So this is what you've been nudging me towards my entire no life. Kidding. Yes. No kidding. How cool. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's not like I had some, you know, some out of body experience in the middle of the night that threw me to the floor is nothing like that. Just over the course of my life, I've always felt as though there was more and I didn't know what the more was, you know, as a kid watching the horror movies and whatnot, where the priest is doing battle against the devil. And yeah, I always sided with the priest. I was always fascinated with that aspect, but that's as far as it ever went until I read that book. And so that's what began the journey into the diaconate was that. And then that was in 1999, again, to show you how slow I am on the uptake. That was 1999. I didn't enter the diaconate formation until 2008. So, you know, I moved slowly, um, but I finally, you know, got off my butt and I finally uh, followed the Holy Spirit's lead and and did something about it. And so that was in 2008. 
and I was ordained at St. Patrick's Cathedral in 2012. What do you by, mean, St. Um, Patrick's Cathedral? In New York City. It, really? Yeah, that's what, and that's a whole, I, I tell you, if we got time, that's another experience. I would, people ask me about, you know, the diaconate and what it means in my life and everything. And again, I hold on completely. I hold on to the notion that I'm just a regular guy that maybe is paying attention. Now, I will tell you this. The ordination that I experienced at St. Patrick's Cathedral is the identical diaconate ordination that every deacon goes through. Of course, I had my own experience with it. And at my ordination, there were two moments in the ordination that absolutely brought me to tears. The first one, well, I'll just mention the two. The first one that I would mention is every, every deacon candidate, let's say, kneels before the bishop, or in my case, it was Cardinal Dolan. And Cardinal Dolan places in my hands the book of the Gospels. Mm. And he says to me, receive the book. Now, I'm probably going to mess up the word. So it's something like this. Receive the book of the Gospels, whose herald you now are. Believe what you read teach what you believe and practice what you teach. Now, if that's not hey, a wait, mission... Wait, 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 repeat that. Or repeat that. that that's a power. Okay, because repeat this thing. is something... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're asking me to, because this is something that I bring to even the laity's attention. Believe, okay, so it, it starts off, receive the book of the Gospels, whose herald you now are. Okay, so that's me. I'm the as a deacon. We are the we proclaim the gospel. Mm -hmm. That we are the we are supposed to be the physical embodiment of the gospel in the modern world. We're supposed to be the ones that are out there living the gospel, like Saint Francis of Assisi, of Assisi preach the gospel at all times when necessary. Use words, right? We are. Well, I supposed think you to know be, what you know what deacon. It's necessary. Yeah. Well, thank you. Nowadays, it's necessary to use words. Yeah, and just as an aside, just as an aside, the most famous deacon of all, of course, is St. Stephen, right? Mm -hmm. He was one of the mm -hmm. first seven to be ordained. And just, just to keep things in context, when you read in the Acts of the Apostles his ordination, right after him and the seven were ordained, what was Stephen doing? He was out there preaching, and they loved it so much that they stoned him to death. Mm -hmm, right. So mm -hmm. if you're a good deacon, be ready for that. But I digress. So, yeah. So going back, believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach, believe what you read. And that's very simple. It breaks down to what, what is contained within the gospels, what's contained within the Bible. None of it is a lie. It is 100% absolutely true. So never be, never question it. You can question your understanding of it. You can question your ability to live by it, but never question its authenticity or its truthfulness. Believe what you read. And the second part, teach what you believe. Never, ever, ever should we shy away from what is true. We're going to suffer the slings and arrows. Jesus made it abundantly clear. If they're going to do this to him, why should we expect it to be any different for us? And so every one of us, every devout Catholic, should, should remember, especially the older ones, that you are confirmed into church militant. And part of that means that there is a spiritual battle going on, and that spiritual no. battle is real. Let's talk about more about that battle when we get back. Uh, what is driving the times? We're talking with Deacon Don Prendergast, uh, Deacon in the Orlando Diocese, formerly in the Air Force, uh, New York police detective, and uh, father, I believe, of eight. Yep. Uh, many of your children are adopted from Russia. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Five of his children are adopted from Russia. Praise God. We will be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, 
where have all the cowboys gone? Ride the proving trail. When I was 20 years old, I discovered a 2,600 year old quote that stirred something powerful up in me. I felt like a racehorse that is seething with power, hardly able to control his anticipation to run the course as he waits for the rider to spur him into action and release him to his desire. These are the words of the ancient Hebrew prophet Habakkuk. Write the vision down in words big enough so that the one reading it can run while he's reading. And if the vision tarries, wait for it, for surely it will come. Seek the Lord in his plan for your life and then ask for the grit and the grace to pursue it. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, we're walking back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Our our adventure guide today, our co-guide with me is Deacon Don Prendergast. We want to make sure uh, to invite you to go check out my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the uh, Cowboys Gone? The first two chapters uh, mention exactly what Deacon Don talked about at the top of the story about, the, for example, the, the Boy Scouts have a creed, but they also have a code. The Marines have a creed, Semper Fi, but they also have a code. And one of the, the first two chapters, I'm quoting the Louis L'Amour Western, I think it was John Wayne who said it in one of the movies based on the book. He says, every man's got to have a creed and a code you can live by. That's what that book is about. It's to help you define what is your one sentence or two sentence statement is your creed. My personal one is the most radical quest a man can pursue is to abandon himself to the wild adventure of God's will. That's just, that's the way God wired me within the context of every man's purpose. There's like a unique, unique sort of way that you will express it. And then um, the code are those 12 rules. You know, how am I going to live? My, how will I live that life out in a day-to-day -day way? And you should know, if you should know your creed and you should be able to spend some time writing down what rules will you live your life by? We're talking with Deacon Don Prendergast, um, Deacon in the Orlando Diocese. We were talking about uh, why don't we launch this again from where what the what the what Cardinal Dolan said to you when you were uh, uh, ordained a priest, and then I want you to talk about the reality of the world we live in today, the drive, what's behind the times. Sure. So at my diaconate ordination, um, being a permanent deacon. You know, um, it was a it was an incredibly profound moment. You know, I'm kneeling before Cardinal Dolan and he places the book of the Gospels in my hands. And he says to me the same that he says to all the deacons, receive the book of the Gospels, whose herald new, you now are. Believe what you read, teach what you believe and practice what you teach. And so it's it's a mission statement. It's it's marching orders, you know, to go out into the world and actually live it. One of my first spiritual directors, um, he had said to me, he says, you know, as a priest, for, well, first of all, I, I'm a permanent deacon, so I'll never be a priest unless something extraordinary happens, but I don't expect that. But he says to me, as a priest, we live in the sanctuary. We live within the safety of the sanctuary. But as a permanent deacon, he says, you have one foot in the sanctuary and one foot in the mud of life. 
you know, because priests priests don't have to, you know, they'll never, well, they're not going to experience the issues involved with family life and marriage and children. They're not going to have to worry about, you know, um, making the mortgage payment because the priest is under the protection of the sanctuary and the diocese and whatnot. And so it's a different lifestyle being a permanent deacon, a much different lifestyle. And so that first experience of, of Cardinal Dolan handing me that book of the gospels, that just made it abundantly clear. And even when I, when I offer homilies that may be considered controversial or sensitive or what have you, you know, my attitude is, please tell me if I said anything that was in error. That's important because Jesus did not intend on going out and making buddies with everybody. You know, Jesus's ministry, his public ministry was not geared towards making friends and making everybody feel good. You know, I mean, the most profound image that we have is the, the bread of life discourse where he's talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. And most of the crowd walked away from him. He didn't say, wait, come back. Let me explain it a different way. What he did was he turned to the apostles. He turned to, turned to the disciples. He said, okay, so are you going to leave now? Are you also going to leave? And it was Peter that said, to whom shall we go? Where are we going to go? You're the one that has the words of eternal life. Where else are we going to go? And that tells me that what God needs us to understand, what God needs us to know, is that the life that we are called to live is not a life that is going to lead us to worldly happiness. It's a life that's going to lead us to eternal joy. Because every one of us is going to go through hard times and the happiness is going to fall away. And if that's all that we have everything focused on, you know, if, if all we're doing is looking for some ridiculous hedonistic pleasure seeking, well, then we have nothing. Because what good is any of that when you find out from the doctor that you've got cancer? What good is any of that when you're, you, you know, you and your wife have been have been desperately trying for a child and she experiences a miscarriage. What good is any of that hedonistic, stupid pleasure seeking when hard times come? Cause we know from scripture when the storms come and buffet the house, right? Not if the storms come, but when they come, it's the house that's built on rock that will stand. And so this you has know, been I, like the cornerstone ahead, of, this has been the cornerstone of my entire ministry. We're talking with Deacon Don Prendergast, uh, Deacon in the Orlando Diocese there with Bishop Noonan. Um, you know, it was it's similar uh, to me. I remember I was in college, I think it was, had a great, a real conversion experience. And I wrote this poem, happiness depends on happenings. It comes and goes with the tide, but joy comes from the Holy Spirit inside. And it's very interesting in these times of adversity, and I want to talk about these times now with you. That I'm going to just say it like it is. When I look at when I look at certain people, those that are that are standing for for conservative and traditional values, um, they look happy. The people that are saying, you know, we got men have to be women and women have to be men. They just they don't look happy. They look miserable and angry. You know, uh, there's something about being a Christian with the Holy Spirit inside that just that lifts us up. Our, we we have a joy in spite of all the, in spite of any of the tribulation. But uh, talk to us now. How? What is the gospel going to say? You know, you talked about being a uh, difference. Jesus didn't come to be nice. I think some people picture Jesus as being sitting down here at Starbucks across the street here. You know, reciting his latest poem. Why can't we all get along? Uh, Jesus wasn't nice, but he he is good. There's a huge yeah. difference. A, ni a nice guy is a doormat. Right. A good man, though, is gonna is will stand up and stand for something. So. What where where do you what is the voice of the gospel in these in this in this time this these the season that we're in? So, thank you for for that because this is really the cornerstone of everything that I'm trying to focus on in my own life and also in the 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 podcast that I'm that I have through the fire. We're living in a world where we have so much pressure to suppress that which is true. 
you know the uni- uh, for example if you speak in, if you speak in, in the universities today mm-hmm. one of the fundamental questions that none of the professors are inclined to answer and this is this is very troubling to me because we have a whole generation growing up with this one of the fundamental questions that the professors don't like to answer is the question of is there objective truth no pilot pilot asked that que- question yeah. What is truth? What is truth? And, and and truth was standing right in front of him. Exactly. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. But you see, if you, if if the world recognizes that, well, then they have to compare that to themselves and how they are living. And see, it, and and it's so much easier for the world to just be have that that constant morphine drip of hedonistic pleasure to just numb the senses and and keep as many people as as a as a zombie almost and not mm-hmm. focus on what actually is true and bear when we you know it's very simple when we understand what is true when we understand that Jesus is truth itself when we understand that then it becomes so much easier to live a virtuous life now, I'm not saying that we're going to live it perfectly, but in a way, we don't have to. You see, here's the other thing. I truly believe this, and I've been spending a lot of time listening to people that know a lot more than I do, and listening to some of the some of the, the priest exorcists that are making themselves available out on YouTube and whatnot, and that have been willing to, to uh, participate in interviews— one of the things that you really start to understand when you're dealing with the world, when you're dealing with the influence of, of the diabolical and the malevolent, you come to realize that committing a sin is not the intention of what the devil wants for you. Because, as especially as Catholics, if we commit a sin— well, we can go to confession and we can have that sin forgiven. We can offer up penance. See, that's not the goal. The goal, otherwise, is for us to sin so frequently that we lose track of ourselves and we become hopeless. I'm talking with Deacon Don Prendergast. He's a deacon in the Orlando Diocese. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. 
my 12 rules for manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? At schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? There is no man more dangerous than a man who stands by his personal creed and his personal code. He fights to retain his honor knowing that a man's honor is earned only with struggle and testing, and it can be lost in a heartbeat when a man goes against his virtue. A man who has a habit of living by his creed never quits. As a ninja black belt, our creed was simply this. Though my enemy hold his sword to my heart, yet I will prevail. Still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Uh, welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Our guest today is Deacon Don Prendergast. Uh, he's a deacon in the Orlando Diocese. Um, you were saying that the that what happens when there? I was write, reading writing one of these two for my new my new my do, new book on the man meditations about um, uh, being given over to a reprobate mind when our conscience is seared, as Paul would say. When you pursue pleasure, you really become effeminate. A man becomes effeminate. He's no longer manly. When he's seeking pleasure, it weakens his soul. It fractures his his ability to see truth. But when you when you really are pursuing truth, if that's part of your creed and your code, it's it's pretty simple to know which way to go. In you know, uh, prudence teaches you the true good, and love really is to pursue the true good for yourself and for others. It becomes pretty simple to find out what decision you need to make, and by the grace of God, um, as you said earlier, it's easy. Um, it, it, maybe that's making light of it. There's going to be adversity, but there's a certainty. Uh, in the truth that puts what puts iron in a man and uh, helps him to pursue that true good. And right now we need our men to not be the nice guy. We need me need men to be good men and pers to pursue virtue in every situation. The world is, isn't just careening towards the cliff. It's careening off the cliff right now. Yeah, that's true. You know, I, I keep thinking about when we started this conversation, you had mentioned King David, and when when we think about David, we know that Scripture says that he was a man after God's own heart. Mm. We also know that David was not a nice guy. David messed up a lot. He made a lot of mistakes. So what can we learn from that? What can we learn from the fact that, you know, here's a guy, he messed up left and right, but how can you be someone, how can you be an individual who at the same time sins, but also is a man after God's own heart. And this is why I was saying earlier, we're going to sin. We know because we're not perfect creatures, we're going to sin. And this is why the church in its, in its beauty and elegance and wisdom, Jesus gives us the sacrament of reconciliation. And so we have that to go back to Christ and to seek forgiveness this is the process of living a virtuous life. I think it's, it's a misnomer to think that we need to all start at the finish line where we already are pious and virtuous and we already have achieved perfection. That's not going to happen. At least, hey, I'll speak for myself. It ain't going to happen in my life. But what I recognize is the process, the pilgrimage, that's what it really matters, is the pilgrimage towards perfection. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. But this is a process. And if we want to be men after God's own heart, we need to recognize the process. We need to recognize where we are in our pilgrimage and where Jesus wants us to be. One of the things that drives me nuts is when you hear the expression, oh, God loves you just the way you are. No. No, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't. No. <clears throat> what he does love, he loves 
the potential. He loves what you, what he knows he created you to become. That's what God loves. That's well, what heard, he is inside. I mean, he loves you because you're made in the image of God. I've heard it said this way, man loves, God loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to leave you that way. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. There, yeah, I've heard that there, also. There, and that's that that through the fire concept. And that, that place where Jesus said, be perfect, even as your heavenly father was perfect, it kind of reminds me of the the be uh, commands in the in um in Genesis, let there be light. Mm -hmm. uh, let there be, you know, um, but you know, the, all the let be statements uh -huh. were were commands and, and the, the be attitudes. Um when God when Jesus said be perfect, it's a command, but it's also a uh, a proclamation yes that he will he will he will lead you on this path to perfection um but to say that we i love that we what you said is that we don't start at the finish line no <laughs> as, as so, paul said i finished the race yeah i mean well yeah and and well where is paul speaking that from paul is is speaking that you know inches away from from his death you know he sees that he's coming to the end of his life and he makes that recognition um, but you know, I, I see when we look at Christ, when we look at Jesus, let's just do this for a second. When we look at Jesus in his humanity, we see the ideal of what we could become. It's the ideal. And as with every ideal, it's always going to be outside of our reach. But we need something to focus on because it, without the ideal, without the proclamation of be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect, without that ideal, we run the risk of becoming complacent. And this also is important because as you go through the process of, of becoming closer and deeper in relationship with Christ, as you go through that process, what you naturally find is you become more critical towards your own personal sinfulness and you become more forgiving towards others sinfulness because you start to recognize i mean i've had this experience plenty of times i've gone through the experience of being judgmental towards others and why can't everybody be as devout as i am you know kind of like the story of the two men at the temple the guy in the front who's saying God, thank you for creating me in such a way that I'm not like the rest of these. And the guy in the back who can't even barely lift his head up. And Jesus says, who went home justified? I've been the guy up front. I, I know what that feels like, thinking that I've got it all figured out. And then, of course, you know, my guardian angel has a good way of reminding me that I don't. But it's a process. It absolutely is a process that we go through. And it's a process that we need to go through. Because on the other side, and this is something that I talk about a lot, I see, for example, you know, I think, I think Judas gets a bad rap. Now, let me explain. I don't see how the sin of Judas is any worse than the sin of Peter. I don't believe that one sin was any worse than the other. A denial of God forsaking God, sinning against God, a sin is a sin. We can get into the technicalities of, of particular sins, venial and, and mortal, but generally speaking, sinning against God is sinning against God. What I do see, though, in a very profound way, is Peter went back to the community. Peter returned. He sought reconciliation. Judas did not. Judas believed that he was beyond forgiveness. Judas became hopeless, and, and it resulted the, in his own death. That's even more denial. And as Jesus said, it'd be better for that man that he never was born. Right? Hell is hell is hell is not a hell is not a good place. Not a right. good place to end up. I mean, we're so talking we're, with Deacon Don Prendergast. He's a deacon in uh, Orlando. Uh, the Orlando Diocese. You know, I was working on another man meditation. My new my new book. I'm working on man meditations for men of grit and grace. When I, you know what, you know what, Deacon. When I when I start each meditation, it's it's a scripture verse or it's a quote from John Wayne or maybe G.K. Who knows? Early Church Father. But then I then I I don't say like Saint John of the Cross. Mm -hmm. I'll say just the person's name. And like with King David, I just said David, womanizer, murderer. 
mm-hmm. in parentheses. So I describe them um, in a, I, I don't put that big, they're so holy I could never be that person. But this man, King David, he was a murderer and a womanizer. Um, uh, Moses yeah, murdered a man, you know, so see, you know, and so I, I so I, I try to, I know they don't want to be on the pedestal we put them on. Mother Angelic she just hates the way we talk about saints, like they're just so, so, so perfect. She's a bit of a spitfire herself, right? She is, yeah. But to, but to realize that God, that if God can do that with David, he can do that with me. And I, there's a friend of mine who's um, Eric Wardrum from the Catholic Cross Bears Motorcycle Ministry. He was in, um, he was in um, prison and a priest was coming, coming in, giving confessions hearing confessions and he just it was just within himself he's just saying he was just it was just he was battling and finally as the priest was leaving he said father there's one more man here that needs to you need to hear my confession and so he came back and he the priest said well what what are your sins and he said all of those 10 commandments i'm in here for murdering a guy and, and but it was at that moment that you were referring to when you go back to the community how do you return to the community is through the sacrament of reconciliation when you confess your sins as the bible says one to another as he confessed his sins to the priest in persona christi he's reconciled to god the father he's also being rec- reconciled he's reconciled to god he's also being reconciled to the church because when you sin, you do harm to the church, whether they are aware of your sin or not. But he's also being reconciled within himself with a fracturing of his soul. So we encourage people to uh, to take advantage of the sacrament of reconciliation. Praise God that we have that, because we're not a church of the perfect. You know, Deacon Don, we're we're out of time. I, I'll give you twenty seconds to give your last sound bite, and we got to roll. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity, Bear. I, I really appreciate it. And so, you know, the podcast that I'm putting together, it's called Through the Fire. And um, right now you can hear it on Salt and Light Radio Network. And um, also you can you could see the, uh, you could hear the, the episodes at castingthe.net. And what I'm really hoping right, wait, to wait. accomplish. Yeah. Now that we got to roll. We got to roll. Okay. Time, we're, we've run out of time. But it's casting... What is casting, it? Casting the dot net. Yeah, and David Fortin's working on it. Let's give a shout out yes. to our friend David Fortin. He does so much behind the scenes people don't even know. We love David. Praying for you. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.